Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the second devlog. We are now at one month of development, or about 55 hours. Let's go see what we did in the last two weeks. First, we did a ton of improvements on the build system. It is now possible to select the objects that were already built and move them around. You can also rotate them and even destroy them if you want. We also added a little offset between the finger and the position of the objects in the world while you're moving them. Otherwise, the objects were pretty much always hidden behind the fingers, which make it really difficult to place them where we want. Then we created the resources system. So now when the player taps on an object that can generate resources, they spawn into the world. These objects are physics based, so they will fall into the world as soon as they appear, and then they will remain active for a couple seconds. This is not implemented yet, but the objective will be that the player can interact with them while they are on the ground. Once the delay is completed, the objects disappear and they increment the amount of resources that the player currently has, as you can see in the top left corner right now. The next step will be to consume these resources when the player builds a new object in the level. To make this video a bit more interesting, we also modeled a couple new assets. These assets are not final, they are just there as placeholder until we have better versions of them. It also gives me more time to relearn how to model, since it's been a while since I did any kind of artistic things. Finally, to speed up the development process a little bit, we created a small tool that is going to generate the icons of our 3D modeled objects. Even though this is a super simple task, this is going to save us a ton of time because we are going to have a ton of assets. In short, we have a scene capture component that is going to generate two render targets, one for the color and one for the alpha. Then we can select the objects that we want to uh, take a picture of. And let's say if I want to change the texture of this house right here, I can just go in the houses and find the correct house, which is this one. Then I can adjust the position of the camera. So uh, the length of the camera spring arm, then I can rotate the camera a bit if I want. Maybe I can change the height of it also. Uh, so let's say I want to focus on the door instead, something like that. So then we have uh, our current render target that are uh, dynamic, but we want to convert them into a uh, static texture. So we can just click export. This is going to generate two PNG files that Unreal is asking me if I want to re-import them. And if I say yes, these are the new texture that are gonna be used in the game for this model. As I said, this is a pretty simple setup, but this is going to save us a ton of time because we don't have to go in another software, let's say Photoshop, to create a texture every time we want to add a new asset into our game. Et voilà, I guess that's it. This is pretty much everything we had the time to do in the last two weeks. As always, let me know what you think. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.